Oh, hey, it's Rob, and I'm in the upstairs kitchen uh, yet again. So uh, a lot of the uh, winterization stuff is done. Uh, there's still some more to do, but most of it is uh, small stuff that I can get to pretty easily. I wanted to get to working in the kitchen again because I have a stainless steel vent hood that I want to put in along with a stainless steel backsplash for the stove. And uh, I want to try and get them both installed roughly at the same time because it just goes a lot better that way. So we're going to do that now. So one of the first things I want to do is there is a knockout, uh, <laughs> a knockout here for the power inlet and this matches the place on the wall where the power comes in. Evidently these are fairly standardized which is nice. So I'm going to try and take this one out. There we go. The next thing is to install this little uh, strain relief for the cable that comes in. And I want to do this so that this part is on the outside. And uh, it's going to be easier if these screws face down, which is this way. So to do that, I'm going to have to take this off. So the wiring is pretty simple. Uh, you've got your hot and live, or your uh, <clears throat> hot and neutral connections here, and a ground lug here. The connections from the wall are pretty much the same. You've got your hot and your neutral, and then a ground wire. Again, for now, uh, just installing the strain relief cable clamp. It's in pretty good shape. So the underside of this is just bare shelf and it is recessed. Now the recess might cause a few problems because the top of this is flush mounted, but it's going to be flush mounted to the bottom of these. So what I want to do is I want to add some support in here for being able to mount it. Happily, I happen to have these extra wood pieces laying around that are exactly the right height to fit in there and act as supports for the vent hood. Ten and three quarters will do it. So something I'd like to do is to do a dry fit first to make sure that everything is going to be working the way that it should be. <clears throat> fits pretty well. I do have the cable down and back, but I need to have it sitting out a little bit from the wall uh, in order to accommodate the backsplash. Ah. So I'm going to drill three holes in here that are staggered so that I've got one up here, one here, and one here. The reason I'm doing that is because the screws that hold on the uh, vent hood itself are going to go down more toward the middle or at least even a little bit more toward this outer edge and I want to make sure that this has multiple points to hold it on as well as having clear space for the screws that are going to mount the vent hood to these. I'm using these number six screws. Uh, they are one inch long because when they go through they will sit proud about a quarter of an inch and this piece on the bottom is slightly thicker than a quarter of an inch so they won't poke up through the bottom of the shelf on the inside. Another kind of a quick tip for you if you're drilling into wood like this and you have a couple pieces tape them together with this blue painters tape and drill through 
the painter's tape. It will help keep blowout and splinters from happening as the drill makes it through. So I wanted to make sure I, uh, I got a countersink in here and sunk these holes in so that the top of the screw will fit in below this flush surface because this surface needs to be flat for the range hood to mount to. Uh, but there they are. Those are the pieces that we've got. I want to make sure that they go in this way with these outer or these uh, these two screws toward the outside on each side. Also, I'm going to be adding some adhesive. I've got some uh, some heavy duty super glue that I'm going to be putting on these uh, to help hold onto the surface and just add some strength to the bond because that vent hood is going to be held on by these pieces of wood. I'm also going to put some on this edge to help hold it up against the side. Pardon the dogs, they're, uh, they heard something outside. <clears throat> and there we go, the mounting brackets are in. Now there is another kind of an issue in that the vent that's going up for the, through the chimney is a rectangular one, and this has a round piece on it. So we're going to pull the round piece off. I don't know if you can see, but there is a cutout here for the rectangular piece as well as the round piece. So I need to try and get this out without damaging this. <laughs> And what we will do is replace it with this. Now this has a damper on it that uh, kind of blocks the air from cold air from coming in, but when you turn the fan on, it lets everything out. Astute viewers will probably recognize that I took out two screws and put in three. Uh, I had an extra one. I just added this piece of tape here to help keep it a little more sealed. I don't think it's really necessary, but at the same point, it doesn't hurt to put it on. So once more, I'm going to do a dry fit. <clears throat> this time I am going to thread this through. See, this sticks out a little bit in the back, so it's not going to be perfectly flush with the back. Or actually, it might be. It depends on if that's going to fit in there. Oh, yeah, actually that will. So I can probably get this almost all the way flush. I don't want to get it perfectly flush because there is a, a, a mounting piece that needs to go on for the um, backsplash, but... So it was right about here that the battery ran out on my wireless mic receiver and I didn't notice. So uh, there's a whole bunch of footage here where I am <laughs> talking and none of it is getting recorded. And this was kind of a pain in the butt to put in just by myself, but uh, I don't know if you could have more than one person do it. A lot of it had to do with getting access to the screws. Um, there are mounting holes in the bottom that are designed for screws to fit in and they're they're slotted with a big hole on one end so you should be able to put the screws in and push it up there and mount it that way. It didn't work out like that quite easily. I'm mounting it to the wall with these wallboard anchors that I have worked with before. I'm really pleasantly surprised with how well they work. Um, they have held in. They're very strong. I'm impressed with them and I like to use them whenever I'm putting stuff into wallboard. Now because I was trying to mount the backsplash in here, I had to mount the 
range hood on first so that I could get the location of it. That way I could fit the range hood or the, uh, the backsplash in the correct place. Uh, what I didn't know is that the backsplash that I ordered was designed to fit on a place that doesn't have a range hood. So the shelf, the shelves that are on it are in a weird place. So I ended up having to make a decision to change it and uh, just put it where it felt the best. Electrical testing. Uh, this is a handy electrical testing device that's a non-contact device. So you hold it up close to the wiring that you're checking and if there is voltage there it will light up and let you know. And this came in very handy because it took me several tries to find the correct breaker. <laughs> None of them were labeled range hood in the box. Uh, it ended up being well, I'll show you. Microwave, which I suppose makes sense because if you were going to mount a microwave above the stove, as I've seen in several places, that would be the circuit to do it. So it's on its own dedicated circuit, which was a little bit of a surprise. I don't know what it is about the wire that's in Romex cable, and I don't know if it's just this old Romex, but trying to strip the wire on this was just miserable. Uh, I probably should have done it before I put the, uh, before I put the hood on, but um, I did eventually get it and uh, hooked it up pretty well. And it's, you know, it's a pretty easy hookup. There's three, three wires coming in. There's the hot wire, the neutral, and the ground wire. The ground wire attaches with the 5 16th socket, um, and the other two were just with wire nuts. And I was able to uh, stuff everything back in and put the cover back on, so uh, it all felt good. And I decided to go ahead and test it without, you know, I actually button it up without testing it first, which is, you know, a little bit of. Uh, I don't know. I was pretty confident that it was going to work. It was a pretty simple wiring setup. And voila, I have lights and I have fan. Uh, you can kind of see little particles flowing through the air there. It's Because there's no sound, you can't tell that the fan is running, but it is running just fine. And uh, I'm pretty happy with it. So there we go. Putting in the uh, the grease filters, they're pretty pretty simple, pretty standard. You know, they're uh, these stainless steel mesh or aluminum mesh. I'm not sure. I think they're stainless, but they uh, they just slide in like normal. So I just realized that the microphones have been off for a while. I don't know how long, but. Uh, I'll have to go back and look. I might have to do some voiceover for this one. <laughs> well, you know, I screw up so you don't have to. All right, that's it. This one's done. I'll see you guys.